Republicans are almost certain to get 50-50 in the Senate. The Democrats are on defense pretty much across the board, except for maybe some pickup opportunities in Texas and Florida, which will be more difficult. This map really favors Republicans this cycle. Any Republican out there, if they were to flip their seat this cycle, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, any of those wins could be the 51st seat for Republicans. They have a ton of chances to try and get that outright majority through 51 in ways that Democrats, given the map, just don't. The presidential headwinds really play a factor in what we're seeing in these races. In Arizona, I think we saw that play out in the debate where Ruben Gallego was talking about some of the more political consequences that he sees of a Carrie Lake senatorial run. She's in denial about climate change, well, but we should not be surprised by that. She's still in denial there. about okay. the 2022 election. And now I give you one minute, you have one minute. Will you finally tell the people of Arizona did you win or lose that election? Can, can we? Can I talk about water really quickly? You can see Gallego trying to call her out on these issues that she's really tried to step away from the cycle. She's tried to shift her image and what she talks about being more local issues focused. In Maryland at the debate, we also saw these two candidates trying to go head to head on really what party means in this race. For a person who says he could see a bipartisan way forward, but was unable to do the most bipartisan thing ever in an election election where he says he despises uh, their nominee, but cannot bring himself to even vote for Vice President Harris. But Hogan is trying to say he doesn't think it should be about party. He was a two-term popular governor in Maryland, and voters do tend to like him. Democrats even concede that. But this is a question of Senate math, and that's a trickier thing to try and explain to voters. You might like this guy. But here's what the Senate math is. Here's how the agenda setting in the Senate works. Committee chairmanships, leadership, stuff of that nature. I spoke with Alston Brooks recently, and she genuinely believes that voters are picking up on what that would mean for Senate control. She said Maryland voters are savvy. They understand that this is the stakes that we're dealing with here. One of the main themes we saw play out in the Michigan Senate debate was conversation over Israel-Gaza. Michigan has a really high Arab American population compared to other states. I take a back seat to no one on the issue of Iran. I am as hawkish as anyone. They have been our adversary for 50 years. We need to pressure them, to deter them, to contain them. I think it's going to be something to be seen whether Slack can, can bridge the divides of the Democratic Party there, bring people together before November, because that state is close. That means Democrats are going to need maximum turnout. And the presidential race could have a huge impact in that state, perhaps in ways it might not necessarily in others. Democrats are working really hard to try to tie Republicans this cycle to Donald Trump. They're leaning in on the message of Project 2025. They're leaning in on the message of what a Senate majority could embolden for Trump if he is elected elected president again. At stake really here is it's a close race for Senate majority and the next president is going to be depending on the Senate, particularly for nominees, judicial nominees, potentially Supreme Court nominees to get their priorities through. If Republicans have a Trump presidency, they could be a bolster to him. If they have a Harris presidency, they could be a check or a block on her and vice versa for if Democrats have control. But 2024 is just outright difficult for them with the races they were handed.